Hi everyone, welcome to another video. Today we're gonna talk about the easiest way to fix mistakes, or at least in my opinion, this is the easiest way to fix any mistake. And then we're talking about a mistake in your clear coat, you make a mistake with paint at the end of your paint job, or uh, you got a damaged lure. This technique can be applied to all these problems and it will somehow fix them let's say it will hide them and we're starting right now so for this example I'm quickly gonna paint a common minnow pattern and then I'm gonna show you what I mean Alright, so now that our lure is finished, I'm gonna make a mistake on purpose. I'm actually gonna ruin this really nice pattern. And then we're gonna fix it with painting a wound over it. So let's say that you're doing something with black, which is a very common color to make mistakes with because it's so opaque and it's really difficult to get rid of afterwards. And we were just painting with our little back, we're doing the stripes or something and we're shooting and all of a sudden a lot of black paint just shoots out of the airbrush. This kind of stuff happens and it, it really sucks. But there is a way to fix it. You can save this without the need to do your entire lure all over again. Now I need to say that if, if you make a mistake in the first or third step along, along your paint job, let's say um, you just start it out, then it's probably worth it to just start over again. Just do a, a white base coat over it or the base coat that you were using. Just start over entirely. It's probably going to save you much more time and effort. But if you make a mistake at the end of your paint job, like for this example, you, it, you can start over, but it's going to be really painful. And most people at that moment don't really want to, and me neither. Uh, I'm not that patient, so if I make a mistake at the end, or even in the clear coat, even if the clear coat has a dent or a huge fish eye or a missed a spot, you can actually make a wound out of it. So I'm gonna let this dry and then I'm gonna show you how you can fix this. Now there are a million different kinds of fish wounds and I got a ton of reference pictures. I saved a lot of them over time. Whenever I, I see a picture with a wounded fish, I like to save it for my own reference to use when I want to paint a fish wound. Now the first thing you need is white paint. I'm gonna use Wicked Detail White. And then you need some kind of stencil to create your wound. Now, I got these stencils. These are from the uh, Artool stencils. You know, they, they come like this in a package. And you cut this out. And then this is what you use normally but I always keep these because I like the edges and I think it's a really great edge to use for certain stuff such as painting the edge of a wound so we're gonna use this and I'm gonna create a very uneven very rugged type of wound now uh, don't be afraid to make mistakes or even get a little bit messy with a fish wound because no matter how you do it, and even if you make it really messy, it's still gonna end up looking like a wound because wounds are so diverse. They can be white, pink, dark red, light red. There can be a lot of colors in there. And because that every wound is different, it's still gonna look like a wound, even though you didn't intend it to be like that. You maybe uh, make it a little bit too messy or you make a mistake while painting the wound. At the end it's still gonna look like a fish wound and nobody's gonna know that you made a mistake there and that's the beauty of fish wounds nobody knows that you made a mistake in the fish wound 
or underneath the fish wound. It's always gonna look like it's meant to be. So I take my white paint, I'm gonna line out my fish wound. And now I'm gonna take my transparent red, this is Wicked Red, which is reduced a little bit with 4011. And I'm just gonna create a little bit of a pink hue here and there. So I'm gonna spray very lightly a little bit of transparent red, just randomly. Just do it how, how you feel like doing it. I'm gonna use a little bit of Wicked Detail Carmine which is a darker red I'm just gonna do the same thing make some darker spots and textures here and there you can even use a stencil if that makes you feel more comfortable and using a stencil for these kinds of fish wounds I always like to keep a little bit of a distance not against the lure and that's gonna create a little bit more of a blurry texture instead of uh, the crisp lines Now I'm going to use a little bit of a brighter opaque red and just do the same thing again. If you don't have a stencil to use for this you can also use a sponge and dip on your, your textures. It's going to give you the same result. Yeah, you can get really creative with this. I'm going to use a little bit of Phileo Squid Pink and let's see what kind of result that is going to give me. And with some fish wounds you still can see a little bit of that skin tissue, that whitish skin tissue that's still left on the wound here and there. So I'm gonna try to give it a little bit of a white skin tissue effect here and there as well. Ready for a click cut. Right guys, allure is finished. And as you can see, that fish wound was, it looks like it was meant to be there. Nobody will ever know there was a mistake there. I got another great example, and that's here, where I messed up the clear coat a little bit on the top. I forgot to clear coat that part. So that you get this uneven patch, and it's, it's not that easy to fix. You can fix it, but I rather like to make a wound out of it, and it then and then clear coat it again, of course. But then it looks like it was all meant to be that way. Then it looks intentionally. So I really like this solution because it's so easy and you can solve so many problems with this. If it's a clear coat problem, a paint problem, uh, a damaged lure even. Yeah, there's just so much you can just cover up with a, with a wound. That's so easy. I once heard that the difference between a professional and amateur is that a professional knows how to hide his mistakes better than an amateur. And I find that very true. As always, I will leave a link in the description down below for all the materials that I used to paint this lure. And this will guide you to my webshop which is based in Sweden and if you would buy anything there you will be supporting me and the channel. If you got any questions, suggestions or you want to share some knowledge with the lure painting community, leave them in the comments down below. Thank you for watching, have a nice day and see you next time. Bye bye.